A photoelectron spectrum consists of a set of peaks that are superimposed on an inelastically scattered background. And in order to calculate the relative amounts of different materials, we must isolate peaks and define a background that sits beneath each one of these peaks that allows the separation of the signal from the inelastically scattered background. So for each one of these peaks, we require a curve, and this curve represents the signal that we need to subtract from the photoemission peak, and this is performed using the quantification parameters dialog window and the regions property page to create a region that spans an interval over which a background approximation is defined and it produces a curve and this represents the inelastically scattered background. The background that we see within this region is a Shirley background and the shape we see here is fairly typical of an isolated peak where the S shape provides the means by which a background intensity changes from one side of the region to the other side. On the right hand side the Shirley background is relatively flat and in this instance corresponds to the flat background we see outside of the region. So this is a good approximation. On the other side, on this left hand side, it tends to a flat background approximation. However, we can see here that the data is rising. So on the left hand side, the Shirley approximation ends with a perhaps a less meaningful connection with the data. But nevertheless, there is a means of transferring the intensity from one side to the other side of an interval where there's some kind of systematic approach to creating a background shape. Now it's not always the case that the background is as flat as this. And under circumstances where you have a rapidly rising background outside of the region, then the Shirley approximation is not quite so appropriate. We can see an example of a peak on a background that is rising. If we look at this peak here, that is an oxygen 1s, and it has a rapidly increasing background compared to the example that I previously showed. Now, a Shirley background, if we apply it in this case, does not produce a meaningful shape. It has the flat characteristics at both ends once again, but the shape of the background suggests that we have an increase in photoemission signal as we move away from the peak maximum. So this is probably incorrect for these data. So what we would like to do is create a background shape that is consistent with the Shirley background, but that can accommodate a rapidly changing background outside of this interval. An obvious solution would be to change the Shirley background to a linear background, in which case we end up with a flat portion here beneath the peaks and perhaps a better approximation than using the Shirley background would be obtained by this linear approximation. But it would be nice to be able to make use of the shape of the background in order to work out a Shirley background response that would be consistent with other peaks that were making use of a Shirley background. So what I'm going to do is introduce a background which is extrapolate Shirley. And what this does is it produces a Shirley background where the start of the background shape is a regression linear approximation to the data. And this marker indicates the limit of this regression calculation. And then beyond the regression calculation into the region, then there's an extrapolated linear shape that is created from the linear approximation within this initial interval. Now this interval here is defined using the cross-section fields. So if I wanted to extend the interval that calculates the linear portion of this background, I can add this using the first parameter in the cross-section field. So now I have a linear background up to this point, and then beyond this point there is a Shirley calculation. Now it's not very pronounced here, 
but you can see there is the S-shaped curve that is part of the Shirley approximation and it appears beneath the, the peak. So this is one way of producing a Shirley shape is to first of all remove an extrapolated background and I can do this if I use another one of these parameters I'm going to set rather than 25 here I'm going to set 0 and then you can see the extrapolated linear background that is being generated by this linear approximation to the data in a least square sense in this interval here that extrapolates outside and provides a lift in the background that is needed to produce a Shirley shape. So if I return this to 25, this represents the upper limit to the number of iterations that will be performed when calculating the Shirley background. The extrapolate Shirley background is also useful for other situations. For example, if we consider these data that are carbon minus spectra measured from an ionic liquid. And here we have a flat background and it continues to be flat until there is some kind of step that occurs at a distance from the main peak cluster. The extrapolate Shirley background is also useful for these types of backgrounds. If I create a region then the cross-section fields have come in using the same values that were used previously. And this value of 20 refers to an offset that goes from the right hand side of a region to this marker here. And this represents an interval where the regression background is calculated. So if I change the value from 20 to 4, then the marker moves 4 EV away from the right hand side of the interval and a linear background is calculated which is then extrapolated and then a Shirley background is calculated relative to this linear background and the shape of the Shirley background will rise across these peaks here because this is where the Shirley is calculated it's based on the data and an iterative scheme calculates the rise in this background and the shape of the background and ultimately is linked to the height of the background where it meets the data on the left hand side. If, as in this case, there is clearly no scattering that can be associated with these photoemission peaks that is directly below the peak structure, then this fourth parameter in the cross-section field, just as it is with the Tugar background, is used to offset the onset of the Shirley shape from the cluster of peaks. So if I set here a value of say 7.8, I press return, and now the shape of the background that represents the rise in intensity that is due to these peaks here is now occurring offset by 7.8 EV. And hence the rise in the background at this point is due to these peaks here rather than this peak that we see isolated. One of the reasons that we might describe a background in this way is to try and design a peak model that is consistent with the chemistry for the sample. In this case, the sample is an ionic liquid. And if I create a set of peaks, and arrange these peaks that would be consistent with the chemistry of this ionic liquid, then the relationship between this peak here and these peaks should be consistent with the ionic liquid. And from the chemistry, I know that this peak here ought to be twice the size of this small peak. And these should be in the ratio of 7 to 4 to 1 to 2. And without too much trouble, we have the type of relationship that we would expect based on the chemistry and a set of synthetic components. So the background shape that we see here has contributed to a, a realistic relationship between these peaks.